and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm your host, Lynn Weaver. The program is brought to you by Davis Media Access and broadcast on Davis Community Television. That's Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T UVerse 99. We're also online at davismedia.org and uh, uh, you can go on our website, log on and check us out. Uh, today's topic is the Davis Choral and my guests are uh, Don Dean, the board president of the Davis Choral and uh, Alison Skinner, uh, the artistic director. Welcome and thank you so much for your time and for your uh, dedication to our community. Um, now, um, we're going to talk about the Davis uh, Chorale, but first, this is your chance to say hello to our viewers. So, can you say, hi viewers? <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hi. And what about one or two notes, Alison? Oh no, really? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Excellent. Don? Good evening. Very nice. Oh, Good that evening. is very... <laughs> I'm impressed. He's a bass. Can you tell? <laughs> oh, of course, I can tell. And what is your uh, uh, tone? Is it... Well, you? if I'm singing, it's soprano. But A soprano? Yeah. Usually, Wonderful. Usually, I'm just conducting it. Yes. You don't hear me sing much. No. Yes. No. <laughs> well, um, again, welcome. And tell us a little bit about the Davis uh, Chorale, uh, for example. Uh, how long have you been in existence? Uh, how many singers? Um, what do you do? Don, would you like to start? Let's see. In, Give uh, us an overview. In 2018, I think, we'll be 40 years old. So you can do the math. Uh, it's 34 years old now. We, um, it, it's, it's a great group. Um, we range uh, in size based on people's availability to participate, probably between 55 and 65 people. I think the most we've had is about 75. Um, we rehearse one night a week on, on Monday and we do uh, concerts uh, throughout the year. And it's, um, I've been involved uh, with the chorale for about four seasons now in um, uh, spending time with the board, helping manage it and, and, and do different things and recruit members and help Ms. Skinner out um, uh, from more of the business side. But it's, it's a great experience for a lot of people who have always been involved in music or maybe have been involved at different points in their life and have come back um, to, to really enjoy singing um, uh, semi-classical pieces. Maybe you can describe that a little bit better. I think yes. we, we typically sing, I would say, classical, mm -hmm. yes, or standard classical repertoire. With We do more, um, I try to incorporate some contemporary music in, yes. So, uh, but within the classical genre. So we're not doing Broadway or popular things. We're doing, we're doing you know, serious classical pieces. But. Generally, when you give a concert, how many singers do you have? Um, so on stage, like roughly on stage, uh, yes. What Don was saying, we range from 55 to about 70, I'd say, depending on the season. That's a huge amount, isn't it? Well, yeah, yes. it's 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 a technically a medium-sized choir. Small yes. choirs are usually considered chamber choirs are under 40. Um, large choirs are at least over 100. So we're we're just sort of in the middle. Um, but it's a nice size. We can do a lot of different repertoire. We're very versatile, so. We could do something that's um, geared towards a smaller ensemble, and then if we we really uh, sort of beef up our sound, we can do a bigger a bigger work too. Work you know, something, as well. Something yes. that a hundred voice choir could also yes. sing. Well, I'm very curious since we are talking to our community. What are the requirements for uh, joining the society or being accepted in, into the 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 choral? We we do have an audition process. Yes. Um, it's um, it sounds very scary to most people to have to audition, but uh, I try to be very nice. Um, and um, I, I generally like people to have prior singing experience of some kind. Um, so lately I've been getting a lot of singers who sang all the way through college and maybe a little bit beyond and then got busy with kids and are coming back after that's over. So they haven't been singing for 20 years, but 
um, they had good training to start with, mm -hmm. so um, that's worked really well. I've had um, a lot of a lot of singers uh, join lately. I like it if you can read music or at least you have some understanding of music. It's not a requirement, um, and um, so I I do an audition where I ask people to bring some some song that they like to sing. Some people sing me, you know, whatever they know, uh, Silent Night or something that's, you know, everyone knows. Yeah. If they really don't have anything, I'll have them sing America the Beautiful. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then um, I'll have them do some sight singing and a little bit of um, uh, vocalises to hear what their range is to try to place them yes. into a certain part. Yes. Um, so that's the, that's the requirement. And sometimes, you know, I, I, I move really fast in rehearsal and, and um, push people. So um, as sometimes people decide that they're not quite ready and they want to do a little studying before they sing. So it just, we, wor we work it out. Well, that sounds, uh, sounds uh, wonderful. And when do you hold these auditions? Are they uh, running throughout the year or uh, at particular times of the year? Typically people express interest sort of at the beginnings of season. So we, we run from September to December and then January through May or June uh, and then we take the summer off. So uh, uh, typically I try to get people to audition sort of right before one of those times but I audition people all, all, all year, the time. All, yeah, all year and round. do you advertise uh, to the, the dates um, and the times of these auditions? Well, I do them by appointment because mm -hmm. I find if I make a time that I set aside, yes. then half the time people can't come to that time, yes. and so it, it works out to not work too well. So I just do it by appointment, and we do. We put a little, we usually put a little blurb in the Enterprise, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and tell uh, our our best recruiters are actually our mem yeah. people who are already singing. So I just tell them, you know, if you know somebody that you think sings that you would like to join go tell them and then they'll just call me. Yes. Well that's, uh, and, and Don, one uh, other um, point of curiosity here, um, do, is the chorale open to just Davis residents or people from other communities? We actually have people from the greater Davis area and you know from a mission uh, statement perspective we really do try to serve the greater um, uh, Davis community so I think we have a, a couple of people from the Sacramento area from Woodland yeah. the majority are from Davis and as Allison said you know I, I think our, our greatest um, source of people is our friends of friends. You know, I, I brought a number of people to the corral um, because, you know, they know I was interested in music and we, we start talking, oh, you know, I did uh, a musical in high school or I was in a choir in college. And, yes. You know, I, I say, come back. And, yeah. You know, it's, it, it never gets out of your system and it's such a joy to sing and to, to be challenged by, by really great music that Allison picks. So, I mean, it's, it's um, the, the right amount of complexity to challenge a singer without being overly complex that a beginner um, or a novice can really come in and uh, enjoy themselves and improve. I, you know, the, my experience um, has been, you know, getting back and, and relearning how to read music, relearning rhythms, relearning um, you know, vocal control and and how to sing different things has been just great. I mean, I, I, I really enjoy it. And Allison is a fantastic teacher. Well, it, really it sounds as though you're both very enthusiastic. <laughs> uh, Allison, tell me a little bit about uh, what brought you to the chorale and perhaps uh, touch on uh, your background. Uh, sure. Yes. Um, I grew up in Davis, so I'm... I'm Yay! I, yes, that's right. So I grew <laughs> up here and I went through the school system. I sang in the Davis Madrigals, um, Davis High Madrigals, and um, I went to uh, study voice at University of Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and then after that I did what most college kids do. I didn't know what I was going to do with myself, and so I um, searched around for a couple years and decided to go to graduate school in conducting and I uh, went to Temple University in Philadelphia for a couple years and out, out of that program um, got a job uh, conducting a community choir and teaching at a high school um, uh, and so that sort of got me on a, a career path which was great and then I we ended up moving back here um, which uh, and when I arrived, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be able to find my way, you know, 
community choirs don't come up every day and it was definitely what I wanted to do. Um, and it happened, this is a Davis, a Davis story here, my, prior, my previous piano teacher and Rachel Kessler, who's the founder of the Chorale, ran into each other at Nugget and we're talking and Rachel said I want to retire and Sandra said Allison just moved back to town I think she's looking for this work anyway so the stars aligned and Rachel called me and said I hear you're back and I want I'm retiring and I'd like you to come uh, sing with the chorale and get a feel for the organization um, and see if you'd like to take over what so a wonderful story it is a great story yes, yes. <laughs> because it's it the I mean my, my piano teacher perfect. and yes. and uh, Rachel Kessler Rachel Kessler was my junior high choir teacher yes. so it was like these two people who helped me become a musician yes got together and got me the perfect job so well, so that's, that's really it's it's been a, it's been really wonderful to um, I mean, I just walked into the job. It's, it's, it's really great. And um, it's been very fun to get to know all of these people who have been singing. Many of the people, when I arrived at the chorale, had been singing with Rachel since the group was founded in 1978. So they had this uh, wonderful history of singing together. And so it was really wonderful to walk in the door and sort of had a built-in group that knew how to work together and knew what they were doing and so it, it was made really it nice. easier for you oh absolutely yes. and were you accepted yes oh that was actually <laughs> the most perhaps the most wonderful part of the story is that um, that the the group has just welcomed me with open arms and Rachel is still singing with the with the uh, choir so is her husband Don and uh, so there's this great sense of sort of you know the past and and the future all all working together it's oh, really that's nice. wonderful yeah and Don you are uh, the board president so mm -hmm. I'm sure you worry about money once in a while <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ask Allison I, I worry about money a lot <laughs> <laughs> do you do fundraising where does your money come from it, for the chorale a, a large percentage of our our funds come from um, private donations Mm -hmm. um, we charge dues. Uh, you know, each season we do two seasons a year, um, uh, and it's fifty dollars per season. Um, and then during the holiday season, we have uh, uh, a citrus sale that actually uh, I think has a pretty good reputation because it was started years and years ago. And we have a regular group of people who are always looking for mandarin oranges or grapefruits or things like that. So we, we raise a large amount of money um, through that as well. So a number of different sources. Um, you know, we, we also, uh, concerts, we accept donations. Um, you know, our upcoming concert, we're selling tickets. And so ticket sales, donations, citrus sales, and dues. That, that really is it. Um, and it's you know it's a tight budget, but um, you know we we're, we're able to hire musicians and soloists and do what we need to do. Um, it's a nonprofit organization, so you know my major concern from the the position of, of being president of the board is just to make certain that we can continue season to season. Well, it sounds wonderful, and they're very lucky to have you. I'm sure. Um, a bit, 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 uh, uh, without further ado, well, we have uh, chosen uh, an excerpt of uh, uh, your um, uh, one of your concerts from last spring mm -hmm. and uh, we want to listen and to view it uh, but first uh, could you tell me a little bit about could you introduce this excerpt so they are the Chichester Psalms and uh, by Leonard Bernstein, mm -hmm. I suppose. And can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the color of the music? Sure. Uh, what, what, it, uh, uh, what it suggests? Sure. Yes. So uh, this is the first movement of a three-movement work, uh, the Chichester Psalms. Uh, they're in Hebrew. And they're set, um, the first thing that you'll hear is this huge uh, crash of cymbals. And it's... Um, then the choir sings, Awake, Arise the Dawn, and so it's sort of a call to get people to wake up. And then, and then, the, and then um, being, being Bernstein, it goes into this sort of lilting, uh, bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, bum. And that, that is um, a setting of the, uh, the, the text 
of the psalm, uh, you know, praise, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the highest, and, and the, the praise psalm where everything's about praise and this jubilant, buoyant sound. Um, it's scored for uh, a large amount of percussion, harp and organ. So you'll hear, so you'll hear the, the sort of uh, quiet little twinklings of the harp in the background, but mostly what you're going to hear is the big sound of the organ and a lot of percussion. I can't so, wait. Yes, yeah, it's great. Let's take a listen and let's take a viewing. Tisha's Psalms by Leonard Bernstein, uh, performed by the Davis Chorale. Wonderful.
<laughs> Wonderful. We're very far away from West Side Story, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, although you can hear the influence a little bit with that lilting bum, 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 ba da, that 7 8 rhythm he uses in West Side Story a lot, too. So it's, it's, it's a, uh, let's see, I think it's the second movement that that really has a lot of a lot of the rhythms it's it's interesting to compare the two actually. it's fantastic yeah. yes and I, I believe Leonard uh, Bernstein gave very precise directions on who should sing uh, that's uh, yeah it's probably true yeah yes he yes he did in, in this piece actually there's a, a solo uh, in the second and third movements that you didn't hear um, and he's very specific. This must be sung by a young boy. That's right. And you can't have a woman <coughs> sing it, even though the range is, a, is the same that's as a woman. That's right. So, yeah, and he was very specific. The boy treble, is that? Yeah, a treble. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, that's fantastic. Well, we um, have, I just will give a plug. Ben please. Cross sang uh, uh, the the uh, solo and he did just a beautiful job fantastic in that performance. Job. So, yeah. Fantastic job. It's wonderful. And since we are on the topic of uh, of performances, uh, I just want to say that the Davis Chorale will have a concert on Saturday, April 13th at 8 p.m. in the Brunel Performance Hall at the Davis uh, High School. Mm -hmm. And um, admission, uh, there'll be tickets, and admissions are $10 for adults, I believe, and 15, uh, uh, sorry, $10 for the students, mm. there you go. 15 there you go. for the general public, and uh, $20 for priority seating. Correct. And the tickets are, avail are available at the door and also at uh, Watermelon Music. Mm -hmm. Correct. Good. Well, we're looking forward. This is Saturday, April 13. Now, I wanted to um, uh, ask uh, both of you, um, you must have a process for choosing your repertoire. And yes. how do you go about it? Do you fight and tear each other's hair? No, actually, uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a very undemocratic process. <laughs> <laughs> I choose the I music. like that. <laughs> there's no, there's no fighting. Allison <laughs> chooses the music, and I choose to love it. That's right. Exactly. See, we've got this I all figured love out. It. Um, so yeah, no, I choose the music, um, yeah. and I get uh, actually people give me little requests occasionally, and and they'll spark ideas, but it's it's pretty much yes. a process for. Well, can you can we? extract a little secret on uh, what you what you are in the process of choosing at oh, the moment? Oh well I mean I, I'm actually right now I'm in I'm in the because it's right in the middle of the year I'm not choosing anything because I've programmed the entire year um, and I do that by by June yes. and we start again in September and so I'll order all the music at once so uh, for April we're going to be performing um, a Misa Brevis by Mozart. Uh, it's K192 in F major. It's a lovely piece. Uh, it's got all five um, text parts for the mass and um, uh, occasionally composers leave out the credo, but this is the complete mass. Um, and it's it's got um, it's just a it's just a really it's just a really nice nice piece. Um, the we're also doing um, the uh, it's a piece by um, Bach. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're doing a Bach cantata, K192. Yeah. Um, 196, excuse me, and it's a wedding cantata. The music is just lovely. It's for strings and um, there's a soprano aria and a tenor bass duet solo in there. And um, it, the, it's, the text is really wonderful. It's about um, basically God blessing the marriage. And um, so it's, it's a very... Uh, the music is all warm. It's not particularly dark. Um, and then the the last two pieces we're doing on this program are the um, are by a, a contemporary composer. He's probably about my age. His name's Ola Yelo. He's from uh, uh, I think it's Norway, but a, a Scandinavian country. And um, but he is uh, living and working in New York City. Um, and there are two pieces called Dark Night of the Soul and Luminous Night of the Soul. Um, and they're texts translated by uh, St. John of the Cross, beautiful mystical texts about um, this sort of d divine uh, um, yearning for God that's very uh, sensual. Uh, it's very, um, if you didn't know it was about uh, a religious text, you would probably think it was a love poem, sort of um, weaving both of those ideas together uh, for string quartet and piano. And um, they're tricky. 
They're great pieces. They're great they're pieces. Really, they're beautiful, be, but they're tricky. It's going to be a fantastic yeah. concert. Well, it, it sounds uh, wonderful and so much to be looking forward uh, to and also very ambitious program, I must say. Uh, it is. Uh, you uh, keep you must be very <laughs> proud. You must be very proud. Well, um, on that note, uh, I think we need to wrap up as uh, I'm afraid we're uh, um, out of time. So thank you so so much, uh, Don, uh, Dean, and uh, Alison, uh, uh, Alison Skinner, Skinner uh, for joining us and for telling uh, our, your story about the Davis Choral. We really appreciate uh, your uh, sharing it with the community and with me. And um, of course, thank you all of you viewers from home for watching us. And if you'd like to, if you have questions for Alison, you can contact her at alisonjaneskinner at yahoo.com. And of course, you can watch the show again on our website at davismedia.org. And while you're there, you can maybe check some of our other programs and also uh, our archives. So uh, you've been watching in the studio. I'm your host, Lynn Weaver. Thank you so much and till next time.